In our lesson for today, we'll be learning about integers, which is a subset of the real number system. All the numbers that you know, and some that you may not be familiar with, are part of the real number system. The real number system is made up of two groups, rational numbers and irrational numbers. A number cannot be both rational and irrational. In this lesson, we'll be talking about a subset of numbers in the rational number system. These numbers are integers. Numbers like 0, 1, and 39, which you are familiar with already. But we're going to have these negative numbers like negative 19, negative 1, and so on. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to understand positive and negative integers and use them to describe real life situations, as well as graph integers on a number line. Our essential question is, how can you represent numbers that are less than zero? The expression being in the black is commonly heard in the financial word and refers to a company making a profit, while being in the red refers to a company taking a loss. Positive integers, also known as our natural numbers, are numbers greater than zero, which can be written with or without a positive sign, such as 7 and positive 7. Negative numbers are the opposite of natural numbers, which are less than zero. They must be written with a negative sign or a minus sign. Similar to the term reciprocal, which has a mathematical name called the multiplicative inverse. Opposite has a mathematical name called the additive inverse. When you add a number to its opposite, additive inverse, the result is zero. Zero is neutral, neither positive nor negative. The additive inverse, the opposite of zero, is zero. The set of integers do not contain any fractions or decimals other than fractions with a denominator of 1, such as 8 over 1, which can be simplified to 8, and decimals of 0 .0. 7.0. 7.0 can be written as just 7. Let's take a closer look at the real number system. The first subgroup in the real number system are our natural numbers. These are our counting numbers. When we're counting, we always start with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Remember, the three dots is an ellipsis, which means this will continue in this pattern forever. When we add the number 0 to natural numbers, we have the set called whole numbers. Integers. The set includes all positive numbers, negative numbers, and 0, but does not include any fractions or decimals. Samples of integers are negative 19, negative 1, 0, 1, and 39. Another way of defining integers is the set of whole numbers and their opposites. Whole numbers, which are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, the opposite of these would be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. The temperature shown in the thermometer below is 31 degrees. The temperature dropped by 13 degrees. To represent this drop of 13 degrees would be negative 13 degrees Celsius. The temperature now is 18 degrees. Write and graph a positive or negative integer that represents the situation. In a video game, you amass 30% damage. When you are amassing damage, your life bar will decrease by 30%. If you lose five of your teammates, this would be a decrease of five team members. If you gain 5,000 points, we would be 5,000 or a positive 5,000. Let's graph the integer and its opposite. When we say opposites now, in this case, it's going to be on the opposite side of the number line. Remember, we have a positive side and a negative side. What divides these two sides is the number 0. On the positive side, we can graph 11. On the negative side, the opposite of 11 would be negative 11. Now I see we're going in increments of 11, so this would be negative 22, and this would be 22. Let's take a look at negative 24. We want to graph negative 24 and its opposite, so we'll graph 0, which divides the number line into the positive side and the negative side. Negative 24, we'll place it right here. The opposite of negative 24 is 24. Now I see I'm going in increments of 24, so this would be 48, and this would be negative 48. Identify the integer represented by the point on the number. When we take a look at this one, we have 18 here, then this would be 19 in the middle, then 20, and then we would have 21, and then 22, then 23, then 24, then 25, then 26. But when we're dealing with negative numbers, this changes. Instead of going from left to right, we have to go from right to left. So this is negative 19. This next number, a lot of people get confused and think it may be negative 18. But notice there's a negative 21 here. So it's like going 19 and we're counting up to 20. But we're actually counting down to negative 20. 
So it goes negative 19, negative 20, negative 21, negative 22, negative 23, negative 24, negative 25, negative 26, negative 27. On this particular one, they want us to circle each number which is closer to zero within each set of numbers below. When we take a look at the first set, we're trying to see which number is closer to zero. We should notice that it should be two. Five would be further away from zero, as well as eight, and then 10. 11 won't even make it on this number line. It will be way up here. And the furthest one would be 22. So the closest one in the first set is the number two. In the second set, where we have all negative numbers, the closest one looks like it's going to be negative six. The next closest would be negative eight, followed by negative 10. The rest won't even make it on the charts, so they're really far from zero, like negative 16, then negative 19, then negative 27, which would be the furthest one. But when we take a look at set number one, all the numbers were positive. Set number two, all the numbers were negative. Now we have positive negative numbers in set number three. When we're trying to find the number that's closest, we might say three, but take a closer look at negative three. So which one's actually closer? When we take a look at three, that's three units away from zero above. When we take a look at negative three, that's three units away from zero below. Therefore, both numbers are the same distance away from zero. We have two answers because three and negative three are both three units away from zero. This wouldn't happen when we had all positive numbers because you couldn't have two different numbers being the same distance away from zero. Also, if all the numbers were negative. But when you're dealing with positive negatives, you you have numbers that are below or above, or if the number line was horizontal, numbers to the left or to the right. For you can't have two numbers that are the same distance away. We call these numbers opposites or additive inverses. The next closest one would be negative 9, followed by 10, then negative 13, and the furthest one would be negative 20. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.